Welcome back. It's been a difficult year for the aviation industry as the COVID-19 pandemic continues. And with the holiday season now in full swing, many people are heading home, some for the first time since lockdown began. Could this see then an increase in the cost of air travel? Well, we're joined by SA Flyer magazine editor Guy Leach to discuss this and more. Guy, always good to see you. So here we are, December. Airlines are now finally able to fly, seeing a lot more passengers. Is it still the safest mode to travel, given the circumstances? Yeah, that's the key question. A lot of people have been very nervous about being packed in like sardines to a little aluminium tube that's pressurized. Um, however, I can assure all passengers that endless numbers of tests and experiments have been done to check the rate of infection in airliners, and it's proven remarkably low, in fact, almost non-existent. One of the key reasons for this is the way airliners are ventilated. They ventilate from the top downwards, which means that there's very little cross-flow of air, and that means that there's very little chance of cross-infection. And then, of course, there are all the, 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 the testing checks beforehand that you have to present a, 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 a clean COVID test before you even get on, and then you've got to wear a mask the whole time. So with those precautions in place, there is very little threat to getting sick or, or danger of getting sick on an airliner, and indeed that is why airliners have not been isolating the middle seats on a three-row three seating configuration. A lot more of us are planning to fly or have already flown to various parts of South Africa for the December break, Guy, which suggests that numbers have picked up. But do we have a clear indication at this stage of the comparison of the figures this December in contrast to the same period last year? Yeah, uh, just earlier today, I spoke to Mr. Kirby Gordon, who's head of marketing at Safair, and they were the first, I dare say, the bravest in terms of relaunching um, after co uh, as the uh, COVID restrictions began to lift. And they had a very good run simply because they were, if you like, the early bird that caught the worm. They were operating at 105% capacity compared to last year. And, uh, and in fact, they've already just brought in two new airliners. However, the second wave of COVID is, is impacting hard, uh, plus the arrival of old and new competitors. Old competitors, we've seen Kaluta get back into the air again, and a new competitor in the form of the new Lyft airline. So um, fly Safir's uh, loads or, or volumes have diminished a bit down to 85%. But um, uh, these, the, the demand is still there, even without international tourists. Mm. And how competitive is the market as far as pricing? Because it has been a tough year financially for most of us. I think that we'll, we've seen it's been very competitive. It's been actually quite good for the traveler. The airlines have not yet put up their prices. I say not yet because I think they're all busting too. They've all uh, got massive holes in their balance sheets. And they're looking to, to make those up sooner rather than later. However, they are trying hard to get, as we say in the industry, bums back on seats. Uh, they are trying to fill the aircraft, and that means putting out seats at a competitive price. Unfortunately, here in South Africa, we, don't, we do have a very competitive or liberalized open skies market where the airlines are competing vigorously against each other, which has been very good for airfare. So that we've seen that they've stayed much the same as they were pre-COVID a year ago. There's a developing story in aviation tonight. We're seeing the likes of AFP and the Associated Press reporting that uh, Germany is at this point mulling, uh, shutting off the airspace, if you will, to South African tourists or travelers who want to go there. This, of course, on the back of the announcement on Friday by government that we now have this new COVID-19 variant. How much damage would that do to our airlines? Um, not much uh, at this stage. And obviously, it's not great for tourism on both sides. But um, if Germany closes off South Africa because of the, of the similarity that we've seen between the new strain of COVID and the strain that's been identified in Britain, which is believed to be a lot more dangerous, a lot more virulent than the earlier strain, um, then obviously it's going to restrict uh, South African tourism to Germany. It's not that big a, 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 a loss for Germany, but I must say that the loss of German tourists to South Africa at this stage is still felt very keenly, particularly in the Western Cape. Would this have been the best time for a rejigged SAA to take to the skies? Well, no. Um, the, the reality is that uh, SAA is still an airline essentially without staff, without pilots, um, having all locked all its pilots out on Friday afternoon. 
Um, and it doesn't really have competitive aircraft. It's got the remains of the fleet that it couldn't hand back to its lessors. Those are all unwanted old age or old obsolete aircraft, very fuel inefficient, haven't got good in-flight entertainment, not loved by passengers. So SAA is going to be in a very bad position if it tries to restart in the first quarter of next year. There is uh, speculation that it'll, it'll barely start flying at all next year. And even bigger speculation, perhaps, that if it does start flying, it'll fly with Ethiopian Airlines aircraft and crew. Guy Leach, editor at the SA Flyer magazine. Thank you so much for speaking to us, as always.